host Carla Moore and uh, my husband and I, Harold, uh, opened up our sanctuary, Happy Tales Farm Sanctuary, about four years ago. Uh, we both really wanted to have a sanctuary so we moved out into the country, bought some acreage and farm and here we are today trying to spread the word of compassion. So now we're in 2017 and we have grown. We started with just three chickens who needed help and now we have more than 65 rescued animals here on the farm. Most of our animals came from bad backgrounds, so they were abused, neglected, um, they were uh, left behind uh, in barns and things like that. And we have rehabilitated them and turned, them, uh, turned their sad stories around. And now the animals live here happy and free, free to just be. At Happy Tales Farm, um, we take in a lot of abused and abandoned animals that need a lot of rehabilitation. Um, so we really feel like, although we are not a huge sanctuary, we certainly do help animals heal. At Happy Tales Farm, we would just love if we could get the message to people to just open up their circle of compassion. I mean, we all love our dogs and we all love our cats and we all love our guinea pigs and, and maybe our rabbits, but there's so many other species of animals that are just as deserving as our love. Um, we have little Timmy here who is playful and loving. Um, he's interested in what's going on all the time. And then we have Charlie, who's walking over here now. Come here, Charlie, who is also just such a good, sweet, kind little soul. Um, they may not uh, be as domesticated as our cats and dogs, but they have every single right to be here on this planet as we do. Um, and so when we say to open up your circle of compassion, we're just hoping that instead of just thinking of compassion for your cats and dogs, to just open that up and to just allow other animals into your heart. I used to take my kids, um, you know, to see animals on farms and whatnot, and I wanted to show them animals and, you know, foster a love of animals. And then it kind of started bothering me a little bit that I'm showing them these beautiful animals, but not telling them what happens to them. Um, and like many people as well, I saw a lot of information on Facebook of people sharing the horror stories of factory farming. So then we started visiting sanctuaries. Um, I know that I have a lot of activity on, on our Facebook page of our farm um, with people that maybe not have thought of things before. So I like the, the idea of giving information and helping people kind of come around to their own ideas of um, what can I do to, to be more compassionate? What can I do to make a difference in the world today? What can I do to make lives better for animals? And I can tell you that a lot of people have messaged me and said, you know, you've helped me go from vegetarianism to veganism, or, you know, you've helped me think about a lot of things, or I'll never eat pigs again. And although I want them to say I'll never eat any animals again, if they're going to take pigs off their plate, that's a heck of a lot better than not taking anything off their plate. That's something that makes me so happy and so proud and feel so good is to help people on their journey. What I do is I share stories of the animals and I put a face on them and a story behind them. We need to have as many voices out there advocating for animals as possible. This beautiful, beautiful girl is named Stella and Stella is a domestic turkey. Um, we were so lucky to be able to take Stella in when she was just a little poult. We've been together for so long. She's now two and a half years old. We have really bonded. She's very affectionate. She loves up under her wings rubbed. Stella is a lucky bird because normally these turkeys are actually killed at four months old. We've also bred them to have their, their chests um, so, so large that their hearts um, will give out from heart attacks 
or their legs can no longer hold them. And it's just such a shame because these, these are incredible, incredible animals. She will often snuggle right here and put her head up into my neck. Um, she's just such a wonderful animal. And when I talk about opening up your circle of compassion, see she wants under her wing rubbed, um, I mean for animals like Stella. Every sentient being deserves dignity and respect. Um, whether we love or adore that animal, it doesn't matter. All animals are, are born into this world wanting to feel comfort, security. They don't want to uh, be hurt or feel pain or feel fear. They want to feel safe. Um, we really want people to open up their circle of compassion, to understand that even though um, these animals are different than maybe animals we're used to. We still share our planet with them. So whether that's a cat or a dog, a rabbit, a mouse, a pig, a sheep or a goat, all of these animals deserve to be on this planet just like we are. So you look at us, we're this tiny little sanctuary. We have about 60 animals in total. Um, and why spread the word every day? And I'm not, I'm making a little impact, um, but I think that uh, corporations have a huge responsibility um, to the citizens on this planet and not just human citizens, all citizens on this planet. I want glass walls on slaughterhouses. I want people to know that just because the farm down the road looks picturesque, uh, it's not. Inside those barn walls are animals that want to live, breathe, walk um, and be out in this. Pretty much every single one of the animals that we have here came from a farm down the road. Yes, you may have grown up on a dairy farm, but your thoughts were skewed at that time. So you may have fed them good food. You may have let them out to pasture, but you still took their babies away. You still put the boys in a hutch to perhaps become veal. You still treated them like objects, okay? And that's on a good farm. We have animals here from farms down the road that came from horrific situations. But then you have an animal like maybe we have two sheep over, over yonder here. And their names uh, are, we've named them Nora and Mercy. And uh, Mercy is the dark faced one, and she's 12. And her entire job in life was to have babies. Same with Nora. When Nora could no longer have babies, the owner was going to ship her overseas for slaughter because she could no longer have babies because she started to abort them. And Mercy, the same thing. So it does not matter how nice the farm is, these are not objects. They should, their value should not be judged on their uterus. Um, Thomas, our farm pig that we have here, was kept in horrific situation. Uh, he was a runt and so it was deemed not valuable to the farmer. I mean the cost to slaughter him wasn't worth his meat. So he was given to three teenage boys who were going to kill him and put him and cook him on a steak for May 2-4 weekend last year. Papa was used as a breeding boar. He was kept um, in a barn with actually his two sons, Henry and Davy, who also live here. And very much like puppy mills, people have pig mills to put out all the little teacup pigs that are actually not a breed. So when Papa's um, owners decided they didn't want him anymore, they picked up and left. And they left all of the animals in the barn, including Papa, Davy, Henry, and the mother. Unfortunately, the mother didn't survive. Papa and Henry and Davy still don't allow me to touch them, but they uh, are okay with me being near them. They're interested and curious um, with all of the world around them. They just prefer not to be touched by human hands. And after everything that they've been through, we can absolutely respect that. So just because it's a picturesque looking place, it's still a horror scene behind the doors. And if people are saying they're humane and they've lived a humane life, nothing wants to die. You know, so if you consider something humane, you must first ask yourself, would you endure it and would you consider it humane? Because if the answer is no, it's not humane. Well, I love one, but eat the other, right? Eh? Marketing is very interesting to me. You go to the grocery store, you have in your mind, I want to do good. I don't want to support those hens in those horrible uh, cages. Um, I, I still want to eat eggs. So I'm going to buy the eggs that say free run. And I'm going to buy the eggs that say Nestle. Because that makes the consumer feel like they're making a difference. And that is awesome. 
problem is, free run doesn't mean humane. Free run means they're not in, in cages, uh, but they're all pushed together into a room, uh, so there's nowhere to run. <laughs> they just don't have a cage around them. Um, and Nestle just means there might be one box to thousands of hens. So it's just buzzwords and it's it's really unfortunate. Um, they also put the prices up on those products uh, which can discourage people on a budget. So I think what we need to do is have real advertising. The advertising just continues this, this rolling ball of misinformation and they do that so that people can feel better about their choices. Um, but in reality I think deep down we all know nothing wants to die. I just, I want people to understand what's really happening there, but I also want solutions to that. I want people to understand that we can make a change because if people aren't demanding these things, if people aren't demanding milk, dairy, eggs, then the, the industries aren't going to be providing it. They're going to be providing what people are wanting and people are wanting another option. Again, with the social media and everything else is out there, we have the tools, write letters, call the companies, um, make sure you're, you know, you're, you're making your voice heard because in this day and age with the social media platform, there's no reason not to do that. I was brought into this um, through emotion. I saw the videos. I, I knew about it. But then, you know, science does play a big part because when you look at the environmental side, the science is clear. Animal agriculture is destroying this planet. And as much as people like to eat meat when there's no more planet left, no one's eating anything. And change is really, really tough. Carnism is an invisible belief system that is brought on to us from birth. You are sitting at the dinner table as a child and you're fed meat, potatoes, vegetables, whatever. And you're expected to eat your meat. At no point did anyone give you a choice. No one's probably said to you, you know, this is an animal. This is an animal like Fido. But we're eating this animal. Do you want to eat this animal? Nobody's asked that question. We are just expected to eat it. And then we go to the zoo and we look at the animals behind the bars. And, 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 and we go to the farm and we see the cows and we drink their milk. But we don't think about the fact that these are sentient creatures. These are living, breathing creatures. We've never been given that choice. So it just becomes part of our society, part of our lifestyle. We have turkey at Christmas. We might have lamb at Easter. It's what we do, it's what we've always done, um, it's what our families do, um, and that is what we need to change. That right there is what we need to change because Charlie's no different than our dog Daphne. But fortunately, I was able to pick myself up out of that belief system and it was hard. And you just have to learn to change those and give up certain things, but you gain so much more. From time to time, you do get people um, arguing. Uh, some people argue for the sake of arguing. Some people are, but are actually concerned, so they might be concerned about where, where to get protein. Um, where they might be thinking they're just too old to make a change. They might think that um, it's just too expensive. They might not want to hear the message. When delivering a message that's uncomfortable to people, sometimes the delivery of the message is just as important as the information you want to share. So I think it's really important to deliver information clearly with good sources. Um, you want to make sure you're giving them the right information and look at it more like you're trying to help them to come to the answers themselves. And that's really what I try to do um, with our sanctuary and with the outreach that we do, is to help answer people's questions uh, with respect. I strongly believe we all have a journey. And yes, I know that animals are suffering in the background and all of this is happening, but if we don't approach the subject properly, then we're gonna have a whole bunch of people who continue to put their head in the sand and uh, who, uh, who just won't hear the message because the message is too hard to hear. So I think the delivery of the message and the information is vital. I'm a trained humane uh, educator and I think youth, kids are our future. Kids have a huge capacity for compassion, for empathy. Um, we just need to make sure they don't lose it. We need to foster it instead of taking it away. So I love going into classrooms and, and showing kids a whole other side of the world. Um, those are our, our leaders of tomorrow and that's who we need to focus a lot of our energy on. I think it really starts a lot in the school. So in the school system right now, they often go on trips to zoos, um, but zoos aren't teaching children what they think they're teaching them. They can come into sanctuaries and they can see what happens to animals uh, when they escape the, the, the industry. They can learn about animals uh, when they're treated with kindness and compassion. And, and that 
is going to you know hit home for a lot of kids and it's going to guide them in their future and then they are going to become the parents that instead of taking kids to zoos or to marine land or sea world they're going to take um, their kids to places where sure they can touch feel animals but they can do so in an environment where the animals are treated with compassion and able to live out their life we all really need to work together in order to help our teachers to educate our kids lots of ideas for our farm. Right now we're, we're a small sanctuary and we've rescued uh, about 60 souls are here now with us. Um, but I'd like to, to take it into the direction of hitting harder on the humane education, um, teaching others about the issues around animal agriculture, uh, the environment, and um, what we can do in order to make changes in the world. So I'd really like to change this um, and grow it into, of course, risking more animals, but also adding a humane education center. Um, I'd also like to maybe write some ch children's books on the issues of humane education and what they can do um, as individuals in this society to make the world better. We would also um, really, really like to have workshops and summer camps here for kids on a sliding financial scale so that uh, money is never going to be a barrier for kids to learn uh, about animals. So I've got lots of grand ideas, it's just, uh, just we got to get there one step at a time. People can do a lot of different things to help sanctuaries. Um, always we need volunteers. So at Happy Tales Farm, we would love to have some type of dedicated volunteer that perhaps came every week or every two weeks and did specifically the sheep or did you know a specific job. Um, volunteers are really important and they kind of help everything keep going because if not we have to do it all ourselves and it's really exhausting. Um, so volunteering is a big thing. Um, spreading our word, spreading the message of compassion, um, encouraging people in the community to come out and visit us and see the animals. Um, of course, donations are always uh, helpful. Um, and not even monetary donations, donations of things like blankets, of hay, of feed, um, or even putting a credit on a feed store can help um, uh, sanctuaries. Um, also, we're always looking for donations of fruit and vegetables for the animals. Um, I think outreaching as much as you can. If you're not able to, to volunteer um, and you're not able to donate, share. Share information. Um, I think that in this world, our digital world today, your one voice can make a very big difference in the lives of farmed animals everywhere.